this September. Bad blood will be settled. This is more than personal. The long-awaited trilogy. There's real bad blood here. Canelo versus Triple G. September 17th, live on DAZN Pay-Per-View. Visit DAZN.com. This is Matt Frey in Two Boxing. I'm delighted to be joined by Triple G trainer, Jonathan Banks. Jonathan, thanks for giving us some of your time. I know you've done a lot of media today, but it's fight week. It's a historic fight week. Canelo, Triple G, the trilogy. How are you feeling? How's camp going? All that usual stuff before we get started and talk about the fight at hand. Everything's great. Camp was great. I mean, we got no complaints. Everything is great. Triple G always seems so calm and collected. That he's a killer in the ring. I think it was your strength and conditioning coach said that he said to him one day, he goes, just because I smile a lot, don't take away the fact that I'm like a killer in that ring. Um, what's it like working with someone who's got that sort of friendly, outgoing, sort of, you know, very welcoming persona, but then in the ring he's absolutely devastating? I mean, it's awesome. You know, he's, um, Triple G's a fighter, he's a coach's dream. You know, he, he's a hard worker. And yeah, he, you, you can see from the history of his career that, you know, he's, a, he's just an ordinary nice guy. But when the, his sport, he's a very competitive guy. So when it comes to something in his sport, when he gets in the ring, it makes him different. Now for me, he's already in the Hall of Fame. He's already got his name etched in the history books of boxing. So what I want to know is, what does a win over Canelo do for his career moving forward? What would this mean to him, considering how close the first two fights were? Well, in some people's eyes. I think no matter what happens, it's just to be another. If he wins, it'd be another victory. If he loses, it doesn't. It doesn't change. It doesn't change what the body of work that he's accomplished already. Is it hard coming into these fights? I suppose this is more a question for him, but from being his trainer, is it hard coming into these fights knowing that he's had two fights where a lot of people had him at least winning one of them, a lot had him winning two of them? Does that affect how you put a game plan together? Because you think in Vegas, Canelo decision, are we going to get a fair shake? Does that sort of come into it at all when you're thinking about, right, we need to win this fight clear, we need to up the ante, we need to continue to put the pressure on to try and force a stoppage. How does that you know, affect your mindset as a trainer? Uh, it, sh it don't. I, I, know, I know the task at hand in every fight. You got a chance of not living up to, to judges' expectations because you don't know what the judge is looking for. Yeah. You don't know how the judges feel. You don't know if they burp in between the punches. You don't know any of that. You don't know what they're looking for. If they're looking at the fight the whole time, they're looking at the phones. You just don't know, because there's no proper, there's no certain base that they that they judge the fight by. You know, is they really their opinion who won the fight or not, or who won the round or not. So I mean, my strategy and my technique is, is all done off what's best for my fighter and not what the judges think they you know what I think the judges go say or see do you think in terms of judging we have a we have a, a problem in terms of how we score fights because we always talk about well it's it's what you like it's what you see in the ring like when you see a boxer maybe on the ropes you know avoiding punches slipping and sliding and catching shots and stuff like that is it is it hard because everyone's interpretation of what they want to see is so different do we need to have a look at that it's hard, isn't it? It's, hard. it's difficult because there's no there's no rule to say. If usually, if a fighter that's coming forward, pressing the fight, if he get hit more than a fighter that's going backwards, usually the fighter coming forward that got hit the most wins the fight because they say he's pressing action. Mm -hmm. But how's he pressing action? He getting hit more. The guy who hit the, the if I if you hit me 200 times and I hit you 350 times, I should win the fight. Yeah. Because I landed the most punches and and they said, well, they wasn't effective. What the hell does that mean? It wasn't effective. Yeah. They affected. They affected the. They, they affected the fact that they got a, they got a punch count. Yeah, yeah. So if you hit me, if I hit you 150 times, you hit me 50 times, but they was all power shots. 
Why is you winning the fight? Because you hit because you hit me with 50 power shots and hit you 150 times. Yeah. I I didn't get knocked down. We still went the distance. I should be able to win that fight, but in the sport of boxing, like, there's no there's no protocol. There's no one thing to say that this is definitely. It all depends on what the judges see and how they feel. It's a debate that's as old as time. Talk about the actual fight itself. Um, how does Triple G win this fight? Um, just you have to outwork his opponent. That's all you could do. I mean, yeah, you could say go for the knockout, but how, it's not just as simple neither, as that. Neither, it's not simple. Neither fighter has been hit, hit, has hit the canvas. Yeah. So we coming in with a with a with a hard hat mentality. Put your hard hat on. Let's go to work. We're going to outwork your opponent. Absolutely. Right, coming away from this fight, I want to get your opinion on the heavyweight scene. It looks like we're going to see Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury in a all British class class, which is obviously brilliant for us. Um, negotiations are still going on, so I'm not 100% on that. But talk to me about the fight itself. What happens in that fight? Joshua's coming off uh, back to back losses against Usyk. Tyson Fury at the minute is in he's in his prime and he's he's on a real roll at the minute. What what's your opinion on the fight? I think it's a t I think it's a good fight for boxing as well. You know, um, Fury's undefeated. And um, AJ is like you said, coming on back to back losses, and he got a lot to be, he has a lot to redeem himself from. Yeah. So, um, but Fury is Fury. He's um, he's the trickster. He's the boxer. He's the mover. He's just super slick, super talented, and he got a um, all time great trainer in Sugar Hill, man. So yeah. that's that's really where not all, but a lot of the um, power lies in how well and how diverse the sugar hill is. It's just been amazing. Do you think that is the key? Because when you look at Anthony Joshua, he's obviously he's obviously experimented with a number of coaches. And I don't think, since we said the Rob McCracken situation, he seems to have been trying to find one. You've got Angel Garcia there, Robert Garcia. Do you think sometimes there's maybe too many voices in a corner? Too many chefs in the kitchen. If you got 10 top chefs that's making one pot of soup, and they all putting their ingredients in. That's gonna be one nasty soup. Oh, but I got all the chefs. I got the best chefs. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You gotta. AJ is my guy. He's my guy. Like no matter what. I mean, he's a good friend of mine. I have nothing yeah. against him. But like you say, he need to. Um, he need to have a chef that knows how to cook. That have a history of dealing with. Guys of his magnitude, the heavyweights or such, yeah. and go go to camp with that and um, see what happens. When you look at the Usyk fight now back, is it fair to say that if he had a Sugar Hill who he'd been working for for, I don't know, six months, 12 months, however long, would that have been, from the outside looking in, a perfect fit if there was one voice and it was someone like that who has that specific style, that Kronk style where they work on breaking opponents down and going for knockouts. Is that the type of trainer that Anthony Josh you think needs for that type of for these type of fights? I think it's just more so he more so AJ more so need someone to um number one, yes he need one voice. He needs someone to just be able to move and box with him. Yeah. He needs someone that's gonna be if you're gonna be training him, you gotta be able to move and box with him. Because that's gonna open up and develop his true talent. If yeah. he just, once he start moving to boxing, then he'll see a lot of things he need to do. Yeah. A lot of things that's closed right now will open up to him, and that will, it will, he will, it will, the situation will make him better for it. It's gonna be interesting. It's uh, exciting times in boxing once again. Look, Jonathan Banks, thanks for talking to Into Boxing and giving us some of your time today. We look forward to this fight on Saturday. All the best. I know you've put the hard work in with, you, with your boy, and look forward to seeing it, seeing it happen. Appreciate it, thank you.